Hi, my name is Dennis Siri. I am executive director and founder of the New York City Independent Film Festival, Independent in Spirit, International at Heart. And this is the New York City Independent Film Festival Meet the Filmmakers podcast. Join us while we meet this year's filmmakers. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, in this episode, we're here with Bruce and Joy. Welcome, folks. Thank you for joining us. Why don't you introduce yourself? Joy, you want to start first? Yeah, uh, my name is Joy Marzak. I'm a writer and director, and I currently live in Philadelphia. I've lived here for the past 10 years, and yeah, I'm an independent filmmaker. Bruce? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm Bruce Baldini. I am an actor and writer, um, born and raised in Philly. And yeah, just really excited to be here to chat. Okay, great. All right. So what made you want to be a filmmaker, Joy? Um, well, <laughs> uh, I always, uh, you know, I was one of those kids that, you know, wrote plays and directed my friends in them. And I, yeah, I don't know. It was just the natural I just I've always told stories so I knew you know when I was really young that this is what I was going to do so I don't yeah I don't it's always been in my mind that this is what I was going to do right and um I worked in theater for a while and then um I had a moment when I was directing a play when I realized I hated it I you know I didn't like what was going on and it, it smacked me in the face and I realized that I had envisioned the whole thing in shots <laughs> okay. And so that was when I decided to write a screenplay and switched over to filmmaking. Okay. And Bruce, what made you decide to be an actor? I started uh, pretty young. I was looking for something to get out of the house uh, for. And um, I'm from a really big family. And I just started doing some summer theater programs and also sort of realized that I was the entertainer in my family. So decided to make a career out of that. Um, yeah, and also I got into Shakespeare at a really young age. I watched a lot of like PBS specials uh, and just loved it. So I wanted to, to make that my life. Yeah, great, well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. All right, so I guess we'll start with you, Joy. How long have you been doing this? And how many um, films have you done? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've done about I don't know five shorts, and then the, Lala is my third feature, and I started about fifteen years ago. Okay. And Bruce, how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been. I I went to school for acting uh, and graduated, um, and then launched into the to the industry. So about fifteen years, I guess, as well. Yeah. And friends and family, what were their answers? Like, Joy, when you first said, I'm going to be a filmmaker, I'm going to be, I guess you can say I'm theater first. So I was going to be a theater major. What did your friends, friends and family say? Well, I was actually not a theater major. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, honestly, my parents, they kind of just always knew I was going to be doing something like this. So They've been as supportive as they possibly can be, you know, knowing that, you know, it's totally unpredictable career and There's whatnot. Love. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, but they um, honestly, they I always have just wanted to do it. And so everybody just kind of knew I was going to do that. You know, I announced it. I definitely was one of those kids <laughs> that announced, announced that at a pretty young age. I'm going to be an artist. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how about you, Bruce? With family and friends, came from a large family. What do they say? Only after you get a degree. Uh, um, that's interesting. I it's I do talk to Joy a lot about my family. I think that they were actually pretty supportive. Um, they didn't understand it, but I think because I came at it from a classical place first. For oddly enough, it had more uh, gravitas, I guess. <laughs> to them and my dad is such a, a lover of Shakespeare so that's kind of what helped us bond I think um definitely a lot of like worry about financial things but again oddly enough I think because my family comes from really humble means it's like if you have something you want to do you better do it like give it a go 
you know. Bruce, wasn't it your dad that showed you, like he pulled you up and said, like, watch this Hamlet or something on PBS? Yeah, it was it was it was Kenneth Branagh's uh, Henry V that he made me sit down and watch. I think I was in like sixth grade. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was my first thing I can remember. I was definitely obsessed with Kenneth Branagh. And then of course, when I saw his Hamlet, I was like, I got to do that, you know? <laughs> so you blame him. I do. I do. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so are you guys part of a group, a tribe? You have a village of filmmakers or theater people where you are? Yeah, I mean, we definitely, Philadelphia definitely has a small filmmaking community. And so uh, we all tend to work on each other's projects pretty frequently. I mean, it's a little bit different because I'm a writer director, right? But definitely the crews, they're frequently working on each other's sets and whatnot. And for sure, Bruce and I, we have a, like, you know, a group of friends that we definitely are bouncing ideas off of each other and um, helping each other when we're down. <laughs> mm. We have the filmmaker blues. Yeah, so yeah. Them. <laughs> what made you decide to make this movie? Um, this movie really came out of the pandemic. You know, I think a lot of us had a, an existential, you know, an existential crisis during the pandemic. And I definitely did. And uh, it, it took me, you know, I wrote it off and on. This was the first film that I didn't just sit down and write every single day. So I wrote it off and on for about a year and a half. Uh, but all that sort of, you know, pandemic lockdown angst was in this film. Yeah, for sure. And Bruce, she brought you the script. You said, I've got to do this. Yeah. So <laughs> the first time that she that she uh, showed it to me, I was it was more just to look over it. I was helping her cast. I think I was helping you cast for something else. And you showed me the script and I didn't say anything, but I was like, oh, my God, I need to do this. <laughs> and then um she was, you know, she worked on it more and then brought it up over us talking about something else entirely. It was like, I think that you should do it. And I was like, oh, that sounds so interesting. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it kind of, um, I had to do it once I heard about it, for sure. And I definitely, at some point when I was writing, Bruce came into my head and I thought, oh, yeah, he would nail this. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Um, what was the hardest part and what was the most fun part of making this movie? Um, the hardest part, I feel like the hardest part is always just when you get afraid, you know, and you have to figure out a way to manage that. And then and then as a director, you know, you're you're seeing everybody else's fears. So you're trying to manage those. And so for me, it really is about the the fear um and then the part that was the most fun um i i think this was i think this was one of the first films where i really was able to let go a little bit and allow for i don't know more freedom and improv to happen and so that that was really amazing for me, just like in terms of my process of being a filmmaker and the next step of learning and growing. So that was that was huge, actually. I've, I've never looked back now on that. I definitely now have a piece of freedom in, in filmmaking that I've never that Lala gave that to me. Great. All right. What type of filmmaker are you? Are you the type of filmmaker that sits there and says, all right, that child's gone. It's off into the world. Or are you the type of filmmaker that sits there and looks at it and forever is going, I should redo that. I should fix this. I should fix that. Or are you the, it's gone. I made that mistake. Next project. Which one are you? Um, I know when it's done. I do know when it's done. But it definitely takes a lot of hacking away and a lot of time and space away and then coming back and looking at it. For me to be able to go, all right, it's cooked. You know, there's nothing else I can do. Like in terms of where my skill level was when we were shooting and writing, this is as far as I'm going to be able to get it in editing. So, 
but I definitely will keep going and going and going until I know that it's cooked. Yeah. But once you're there, you say, okay, let it go. Mm -hmm. I do. I actually do. Yeah. I always, I'm actually horrible. I always look at films and go, I can go back and redo that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Um, so we all know that in indie world, we're never going to buy mansions and private jets with the money we're going to make in the indie film world. So what would you guys consider success in the indie film world? What does success look like? I think for me, the, for me, it's getting yourself to the place where you're in front of the camera and you're being trusted to do your work by people you trust. Um, this was really, I done mo I did pretty virtually all theater before this, and I was the the actor in it, and apart from two other scenes with people in it. So it was quite lonely uh, to to think about doing, but obviously I wasn't alone because I was with so many people in the room as I was filming these scenes. And I think that the biggest uh, reward for me was just kind of feeling like a one person department in a way. Okay. Enjoy. For me, it's success is when I, I have expectations, but those expectations are exceeded. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, I really do always want to keep kind of, I want my expectations to go beyond, you know, I need to reach further. Okay. And I'm hoping that even what I can see is not the ceiling, you know? Yeah. So I, I do, more. I definitely, definitely want the success to be beyond what I conceive of it as. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. So there's the next question last is, uh, so somebody comes along and says, Aunt Joy, Uncle Bruce, I want to be a filmmaker just like you. What do you say to them? What would be your conversation? What would be your, your. Well, I mean, I can give a literal example in that my younger sibling is said that to us and our solution was to be like, okay, let's make something together. Uh, um, I think that, you know, being from a younger, a, a big family, that being one of the older ones, I really do have so much connection with y the younger generation. And I know it's like, I'm perhaps the youngest person in this call, but at the same time, it does feel like a world of a difference with my younger sibling who I'm talking about, who's 19, you know, and I just have so much curiosity about even just their lens on our family, our own microcosm. So Really, my reaction is if someone comes to me and says that, I'm like, let's make something together right now and see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very positive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I will take, I should have gone first so you could have ended. Um, yeah, I think for me, I probably would say, is there any, if there's anything else you can do, do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't mean to sound so jaded or pessimistic, but you know, it really, it, it requires like your entire being to do it. You know, it's everything. And so um, it's very, very demanding. So you really, really, it has to be the only thing that you can possibly do during your one lifetime here on planet earth. Yeah. Well, that's it for formal questions. Do you guys have anything, thoughts or? final words or anything um yeah if you're probably if you're listening to this you might have already seen 24 frames lala and it i just think that lala is such an amazing character you know and that they are a pure artist through and through and that yeah i mean it's it's worth it you know lala shows you that it's worth it so <laughs> Yeah, I um that's what I would say. I hope that anybody who is gonna listen to this, they probably have seen the movie. I hope you enjoyed it. You probably did if you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> and, um yeah, so definitely. I mean, Lala is a total little inspiration. So Okay. Cool. Bruce, you have any last words? 
I guess I would say um, just use it as a, use watching the film as almost like a meditation to harken back to like how everybody felt during the lockdown and reconnect with yourself and how far you've come from then because it is wild how, it's wild to live, have lived Lala's life in a, in a way by filming it and to be still getting inspiration from that experience. So I hope that people can do that as they're watching it as well. Okay, cool. Great.